All right, fruit lovers, this is Ross. In today's video, I'm gonna take you guys around the backyard orchard that I started about 10 years ago here in the Philadelphia area. And we're gonna cover in the, today's video three different fruits that are ripening right now. It's the beginning of the season, beginning of the fruiting season for my perennials. And we're gonna look at today the Carmine Gumi, the Girardi Mulberry, and also Alpine Strawberries. They're, it's a variety called White Soul. And the three of them are just so tasty, productive, amazing health benefits, easy to grow, uh, problem-free, and by the way, it saves you a ton of money on your grocery bill. So I'm gonna show you guys the different plants, but I also kinda wanna mention really quickly that in actually a couple weeks, maybe towards the middle of June, towards the end of June, I get about 10 to 15 different fruits all ripe at the same time. And I come out here in the backyard every year and I literally graze on the fruiting plants in my backyard like a deer. Uh, I spend so much time just standing right here every season eating fruits off of this carmine gumi. And it is insanely productive, by the way. The fruits are bright red, they taste like fruit punch. And in my opinion, this is the closest fruit or thing that you could eat that tastes like wine. Um, in fact, if you guys really like dry red wines, like a dark cab that's bold, has nice fruit flavor to it, that gives you a nice mouthfeel, a nice finish, this is, this is like the closest thing. There's no alcohol in it, uh, but I'm telling you, this thing is, this fruit is amazing. Um, so yeah, let me just show you how to eat this. There are these little berries they're not that big, but this variety here, Carmine, is, a, is larger than others. There is a pit. Uh, what you can do is just eat it off the stem. And you just kind of remove the pulp away from the seed. Now, the seed inside, or the, I should say the pit, um, is actually rather large, but it's only one, and it's really easy to eat around. In fact, I find it kind of fun to eat these. And I, like I said, I literally will spend like 30 minutes every day eating these berries. I'm not kidding. I'll come out here at different times of the day and I'll just snack <laughs> on this fruit. By the way, there's more lycopene in this fruit than tomatoes. It has an insane amount of vitamin C. And even you can eat the, pit, the pits and they have actually, I heard, a pretty good fat content in them which I found to be rather interesting. So really easy to grow. This actually even fixes its own nitrogen. And in my opinion, is probably one of the best backyard plants anyone could grow. It's called Carmine Gumi. And it was named Gumi because it resembles a gummy bear. When the plants, um, when the fruits dry on the bush uh, and start to continue to ripen, they will turn uh, kind of gummy and they will resemble a gummy bear. It's nature's gummy bear. To me, it's nature's wine. Um, I think that's actually a better, you call this, we should call this thing wineberry uh, or Cabernet Sauvignon berry or something like that. Um, it's astringent, it's tart, it's sweet, it's acidic. You know, it's got everything in it. It's the most complex fruit, uh, one of the most complex fruits that you can grow. Now right here next to my, uh, my garden is actually a fruit that I really, really love called the Alpine strawberry. And uh, this is a different kind of strawberry. Um, you know, obviously there's the strawberries we're used to at the grocery store, but these are just vastly different and they taste so much better. They're typically smaller, softer, um, just melt in your mouth good. And uh, the fragrance that comes from these is unreal. If you're a foodie and you like food and you genuinely like food and you're not growing any berries or any food in your yard, I don't know how you can call yourself a foodie. But I'll tell you this, foodies would absolutely die for these berries. It does take a little bit of time, I think, to, to pick them. And they are obviously smaller, so your yield is gonna be a bit lower than typical strawberries, but uh, the flavor, I think, more than, more than makes up for it. Um, I put these in kombucha, I freeze them. I usually just eat them straight, but 
Uh, you can obviously bake with them and do all kinds of things. Here's what they look like. These are a variety called White Soul. And they'll take your soul, man. I'm telling you. You eat this, and I've had people think that they're not even real. Like, they taste artificial to them. Um, they're just an unbelievable fragrance that's associated with these. And they just melt right in your mouth. You don't even have to chew them. In fact, I'll, what I do is I just put the whole thing right in my mouth. Mm. Couple bites. Sorry for uh, talking with my mouth full, but I'm telling you, it's, uh, <laughs> it's so good. It's like, it's like chocolate. A strawberry that's on crack cocaine that has the texture of chocolate that just melts right in your mouth. Unfortunately, I think the mulberry gets a lot of stigmas attached to it, right? It's invasive, it typically causes a mess. There's also a lot of trees out there that are gigantic and they grow so quickly. So you have a problem where as a backyard grower, we want trees that are easy to grow, easy to protect, and that way we don't have to get on ladders and harvest the fruits. But what I found about this tree here is that it, it really meets all three of those problems head on and kind of solves all three of them. First and foremost, it's a dwarf. Uh, Girardi mulberry is a dwarf variety because it actually fruits so much. The productivity is so high that the energy requirement required to put into those fruits takes away from the vigor of the tree. And so what you end up having is a tree that is very easy to manage. Both of these trees, I think, are about in their third or fourth or fifth season now, and they've topped out at somewhere around six by six. And they're very easy to manage that way. Any fruit tree in a backyard setting, that is the perfect size for them. And the invasive part of it is if you really wanted to stop your tree from becoming invasive, all you have to do is put a net around it. That way the birds can't get to it. And netting a six by six tree is very simple and easy. That way the birds won't eat the fruits, they won't get uh, and put seedlings everywhere. However, that's exactly how these trees were started. I, I actually used nature to my advantage and grafted this Girardi mulberry here onto two seedlings, one of which was right here and the other one was right there. And now I have two trees and I do the same thing if any seedlings pop up around the yard, I'll graft onto them. And now I have a total of five Girardi mulberry trees on the property. That's how much I love this fruit. Uh, so let me take you guys in and show you exactly how productive this thing is. It is absolutely mind blowing. All I have to do is lift up <laughs> lift up some of the branches there. This is every branch on the tree has this level of productivity. And by the way, that, that laugh is the laugh of a crazy fruit person. If you are obsessed with fruit and you like fruit as much as I do, this is just simply one of the best sights in life. Uh, <laughs> just amazing. And not only that, the fruits are pretty comparable to a variety, let's say like <coughs> Illinois Everbearing, excuse me there guys, in size and flavor. And to me, while they may not be the tastiest mulberry, they're certainly, uh, in my opinion, very delicious and sweet. And they have their own distinct mulberry flavor, like so many others I've tried. Uh, I would say even this is not even that far away from the king of mulberries, Morris nigris. So that's the end of this little showcase I gave you guys of these three amazing fruits. And if you wanna see more of the different fruits I'm growing here on the property, feel free to check out some of the other videos I've put out on this YouTube channel. You can pretty much type in Ross Ratty and any fruit and it'll come up. Also on my blog, which I'll put a link to in the description, I've put up a really nice article that I've written uh, that describes all the different fruiting plants that I would highly recommend people try in their backyard orchard. So thank you guys here for watching this one. Please hit that subscribe button, hit the like button, and we'll see you guys for the next video. Take care.